Hey guys, so the whole reason I'm making this video with JC because she was a witness to everything that happened um, on the phone and in person and you know it's very important not to distract a service dog and that's the whole reason I shared um, what had happened in the first place is it could be something you guys think is so simple and it could really distract a service dog that could cause a life and death situation. Of course this wasn't this could have been life and death. It wasn't as bad as it could have been. But because I have a previous brain injury, I am susceptible to brain bleeds. So there could have been, you know, an even bigger issue than it was. Um, but you know, you just can't distract a service dog in any way. Even a few seconds, minutes, it could be the matter of life and death. So the whole reason I'm making this video is because I want to bring awareness to that and how how something so small could lead to something so dangerous and the fact that there are a lot of people saying a lot of things that they you know they were confused about something instead of acting uh, asking questions they make accusations or say it was fake blood or whatever and clearly i have a head wound and i have the paperwork and all of that will be shown in this video so you guys can just stay tuned for my rant about this whole situation Okay, go potty. So I normally release him if I'm not doing too good um, from the door, but I watch to make sure there's no traffic. He also knows the off command, which you guys have seen multiple times for safety. So if a car was coming, I could tell him off and he drops instantly. But he goes potty in this dirt area over here with the um, trees and stuff. And as you can see, all these lines are empty right here, except this is the maintenance man's truck. Um, but right here, the big trailers and stuff that are doing deliveries come and pull in and because it's only like parking space big enough. And so they'll pull in here and the guy pulled in, his driver's side door was closest to the dirt. He got out, he was like, you know, across multiple uh, parking spaces and his driver's side door was next to the dirt where Colt was going to the bathroom, which was right over here. And then Colt like was in the process of pooping and because he got out of his truck and was like oh puppy it stopped him from finishing up his business and he came over to say hi to the guy because I mean he's there's times where he's off duty or whatever but the guy was calling him and he's outside he can go say hi which I was totally fine with but to a point just say hi go back to the bathroom so I said go go potty and he kind of held onto my dog like his arms around him in a squat position like patting his sides like oh you're a good boy type of thing and when I had said go potty he kind of kept him from going then he continued to hold on to my dog after I had saw him do that I was getting really frustrated I was on the phone with JC she was hearing me and my frustration and what everything was being said um, I was still at the door I wasn't over here I was at the door of my apartment and I um, then at that point, because I was frustrated, I just went like, Colt, come. And then he kind of held on to him again and was like waving him, like waving at me, like waving me off, like, oh, it's fine type of thing. And then, um, proceeded to tell my dog to go to the bathroom for me, like kind of holding his collar and pulling him over, which he had a collar on that said service dog. And so then I was, I was pretty frustrated. So I was screaming at my dog to come in and telling the guy, knock it off. Then... He went in, I then Colt came inside. So after Colt came back inside, that's when the event happened because the guy had distracted him from his second alert. If he had just let my dog go to the bathroom, say hi real quick, he would have come right back to the house and done his job. Um, he would have even alerted from a distance. He's done it before when we were out playing ball or whatever. He's done it multiple times. So clearly the guy distracted him enough that he missed his second alert. His first alert is the 
30 minutes at, uh, like he's never alerted under 30 minutes and two hours, he's never alerted over two hours. So it's on average about an hour of an alert. And sometimes it's a little longer, sometimes it's a little shorter. But when he alerts, I take my medication. And then if the medication doesn't work or it just uh, doesn't kick in by then or whatever, he's always normally, like it was kind of, I shaped the behavior of alerting a second time right before it happens so that I don't fall and hit my head. But I was on the phone with JC the whole time and she was hearing how frustrated I was. Oh, you were very upset. I was not happy. And uh, uh, yeah, so then I was on the phone with her a long time before this even happened. I think we were on the phone for at least an hour or so. Yeah, like an hour. Yeah. Um, but I had woken up, I, you know, she knew that I was having bad seizures because I had posted to my story that I had bad seizures all night and Obviously, it had traveled into that day because I was still getting alerted by Colt. And uh, I had eaten, and I let her know that I had eaten because that's kind of stuff that you have to um, let your friends and family know or whoever's like with you or watching out for you because you could possibly throw up during a seizure and choke on it, whatever. So I let her know all that. We were talking on the phone, just casually talking about whatever. That happened in the background. She heard everything that was going frustrated. I was trying to explain it to her, let her know I was pissed off and everything. Then I had walked into the kitchen and um, then I had a seizure and hit the counter, I guess, and then ended up on the floor. So JC's side of it is we were on the phone and what happened? So we were on the phone and we were talking and you were talking about like how angry you were about the guy. Um, and then I heard your, your phone drop. Yeah. And at first I thought maybe you accidentally dropped your phone because of your right side numbness, but you didn't. Um, because as soon as your phone dropped, I started hearing a uh, cult like barking for help. And he's like barking at the phone and pawing at the phone, which is really, it's different because when he howl barks, it's a hello, but this was definitely like a help, help, help bark. And so yeah, and and he's been trained to do that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and like my friends and family and my neighbors all know that if he's barking like that, it's not a good thing. Yeah. Um. And we had just been we were heading out the door and in the car already driving down to, um. I think I was going to Denver. Yeah. So we were going to Denver, and when I heard Colt barking, I like turned to my boyfriend. And I said, "Uh, we need to go check on her. Something's not right." And. So um, and so like you were on the phone with me and you heard the phone drop, but I've dropped the phone before. Yeah. So then you asked if I was okay. Then you started hearing cold bark. So that's when you got worried. Yeah. Cause I've dropped the phone before, but normally I pick it up and I'm like, sorry, I dropped you because I dropped things. That's why my phone is in a life proof case. Number one. <laughs> okay. Because I have broken too many screens and shit. So he, sorry. I cursed. It's, okay. it's in a life proof case on purpose. And it also is because I fall and, you know, my dog has to retrieve it with all his slobber and his teeth and everything. And it keeps my phone safe. So, anywho, um, so then you put your phone on speaker or something, right? Yeah, I and had then, my phone on speaker. So you were in the car on speaker so that you were driving safely, obviously. And yeah, I did speed. I'm not crazy, okay? <laughs> but you were driving safely, like, not with your phone to your ear or anything, too. Mm, no. But you wanted to, you know, listen for the dog or something, right? And, yeah. And we have gone through... I've been... I've had seizures on the phone with you in the past. Just, yeah. like, normal life. Yeah, well, I mean, seizures are such a normal part of your life. It doesn't, like, come to me that, oh, she might be in immediate danger. You know what I mean? Yeah. Unless Colt is telling you. Yeah. But, yeah, so, so, basically, she knew something was wrong. She was already headed out. She lives close by. She rushed over here, her and her fiancé. Husband. friend. What? Husband. friend. Husband. friend. Yeah. Her husband. front. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so they rushed over here. Um, I, she kept me on speaker so that she could drive safely, but still listen in. Um, were you hearing anything at that point? I mean, not not really. Like, when you have a seizure, like, you make this, like, choky noise. I don't know if I should say that, but you do. Like, you make this, like, <laughs> when you're seizing. It's, yeah. It's weird, but, yeah. But then after that, what? You didn't hear really I anything? I didn't hear anything, and so I choked. 
I joked with uh, Andy. I was like, oh, God, I think she's dead. Oh, my God. <laughs> of course she did. Oops, yeah. um, we person. always joke. We always joke about stuff anyway. That's how you get through life. You laugh about everything. Yeah, but yeah. So she didn't know what was going on, though. I mean, how could she on the other end of the phone? She knew something was wrong, but she didn't know I had hit my head. She didn't know that Colt had missed the alert necessarily because, you know, I could have just had a seizure like I've done on the phone with her before because it's just part of life and she knows that she kind of just waits it out or she hangs up and calls back in a little bit to see if um she you know when I start coming out of the seizure that I can talk to her again and she sees if I'm lucid and all that kind of stuff so it's kind of like a part of daily life and we're we're used to it yeah so um but yeah so since she knew that he was barking she wanted to come and see what was going on yeah so then what happened um you said i called you right i don't actually remember this but yeah, she so said we i got called... disconnected somehow and then you called me back uh-huh and all you were like really like the only way i can explain it is like you sounded drunk like sounded really drunk. out of it i've sounded drunk were, like, many times blood <laughs> everywhere I said there was blood everywhere. Yeah, and then I was like, oh, shit. And I was, all like, maybe, like, a minute away from your house when you called back. So that was at the point, if I look at the time frame of when the selfie pictures were taken and when I had called her back, it was the same exact time frame. So right before I had called her back, I had taken the selfies. And, okay, I know people are like, oh, my God, why would you take selfies in that situation? First of all, this is not my first head injury. I fall a lot. This happens in my life a lot. I've cracked my chin open, I've broken my nose, I've chipped teeth, I've done a lot of things because of my seizures and and st being triggered by something. I have a seizure unexpectedly and I can't, my dog can't alert to that or whatever and I get injured. It just happens. And so you know what, like I got up and yes of course I was like oh my gosh there's blood. So I couldn't exactly stand yet. I was in the middle of the kitchen, there's no mirrors around. So I just pulled my phone up and did a facing camera, a selfie um, style, and I saw the blood and where it was coming from. So I took a few shots of it because I always do. You guys know how many pictures I take of every aspect of life. And I share them with you guys because first of all, I'm trying to share awareness and education by my YouTube channel and Instagram. That's the whole reason for them. So of course I wanna share it with you guys, but I also have a really bad memory. And so for me, I can go back in my camera roll and look at the date and be like, that's when I took the picture. That's when I had a head in injury. So when I go to my neurologist and I visit him and he goes, so when were when was your last head injury? I see here that you um, have had one since the last time I've seen you. And I go, okay, pull up in my phone and I go, oh, it was this date. And I show him the picture, whatever. So it helps with doctors. It helps with my memory. You know, I like to see that kind of stuff and keep track of that kind of stuff. So I don't understand why that's so weird to you guys when this is normal life for me. I don't understand if maybe you guys were super shocked on the fact that you cracked open your head and you've never done it before, that you might not be thinking of taking pictures, obviously, because it's kind of panicking. I was panicked too, but it's part of my life. So I took some pictures, obviously called JC back. I was just coming out of my seizure, so it had been like 10 minutes-ish is how long my postictal state lasts. Yeah. Uh, is like 10, 15 minutes, depending on how bad the seizure is. So uh, honestly, we're not sure how long the seizure lasted or how long my postictal state lasted. But in between hanging up the call and me calling her back, um, you know, when the call had hung up, I don't know how. It, neither phone says that call failed or what. We have no idea what happened. But anywho, the phone went out. Could have been Colt pressing buttons. We have no idea because she said she heard buttons, right? Yeah. He was, I mean, he was pawing it. He was going ham on that phone. <laughs> going ham! <laughs> he was. I'm glad I have a life proof place. <laughs> I'd have like claw marks on my screen. Where did these um, come from? <laughs> I'd be like, shit! <laughs> um, but yeah, so basically the um, it, I basically can't, was coming out of it. I was still pretty confused. She says I was pretty confused. Oh, yeah. You kept asking me the same question about, like, eight times. What was I asking? You were like, what are you doing? Where are you? What are you doing? Where are you? And I keep saying, I'm like, I'm coming to your house. I'm concerned. Are you okay? And you're like, what are you doing? Where are you? And you, and you said at one point I didn't even know that you were on the phone or yeah. something. And then, uh, yeah, and then at one point you were like, 
Why are we on the phone? Or so I can't remember. But you were like, you were so was, out of it. Okay, so you so you said I kept asking random questions, didn't know what was going mm-hmm. on. So that sounds oh, like. Oh, and you asked why? Why? <laughs> why? You're like, cause there's blood everywhere. <laughs> That's what you said. Um, so I don't really remember this, but we've talked about it. Obviously, that's what we do. We've talked about stuff that has, I have no idea has been going, like what happened. Like I've been, you know, when I'm being intubated, she will tell me about the story and what had been go- going on and all that kind of stuff. Because of course you want to know what happened to you. You want to know what was said, what was done and all that kind of stuff kind of fit pieces together when you don't remember something. So she helps me remember a lot of things. So that happened. Um, we were we still on the phone? Uh, no, as soon as I pulled into the parking lot, I had hung up on you. Okay. And then, um, I think I actually hung up before you, before I even pulled into the lot. Okay. Because I remember... Because you were, like, almost here, so you just, yeah, like, so hung I was up like, to I'll come be here inside. Yeah, so I like, I'll blah, 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 and then I came inside, and then I saw you, like, laying on the floor, um, and I think your phone was, like, off over in this area mm-hmm. to begin with. Yeah. And you were, like... Dude, you were gone. You were out. And so, um... So I was, like, drifting in and out of consciousness. Yeah. Like, I, I talked to you. You didn't respond. You didn't even do your mmm at me. Because sometimes when you're kind of there, you go mmm. Or, like, try to thumbs me up. Mumble. Yeah, you Thumbs mumble. up. That's one but of our like things is we nothing, always do thumbs up. Yeah, thumbs up or yeah. sign language. Yeah, I just I do sign language a lot of times when I can't completely communicate after a seizure. Yeah, so your phone... I grabbed your phone, um... Because my phone was in the car to begin with. I had left it in the car, stupidly. So I left my phone in the car, and then I grabbed your phone so I could get pictures for the paramedics. So I grabbed as many shots as I and possibly the could. Yeah. yeah, the paramedics and the doctors. So I could get as many shots as I possibly could. I, I tried to look for an injury, but I didn't want to touch you because I didn't know if you like cracked your neck Yeah. or anything. Like, I just did not want to... Didn't want, yeah, to, you didn't don't, want to touch it. Yeah. She didn't, I mean, she knows a lot of medical stuff because the fact that she has to take care of me a lot and stuff. But in a situation like that, she didn't know how everything had happened. Nobody, nobody knows for sure. Heck, we don't know. So nobody knows for sure, but she wanted to make sure that I didn't have like, you know, some type of injury or something. She was telling me to stay, you know, down or whatever. She was trying to keep me safe and stuff. You know, when I was coming to and stuff, but of course I was too out of it to really even listen. Yeah, you're really stubborn when you're out of it. <laughs> stubborn. Um, but she did say that um, she took she took the pictures. She was talking to me about how she took the pictures. And I was like, really, you did? I was like, I want to see what it looks like <laughs> um, when I had come back around again. So this had been the, I don't know, second, third, I don't know, time that I had come back around. And I still hadn't remembered that I had taken selfies or that there was blood pictures or whatever. At this point in time, I did not remember that. So then I'm pulling, I'm looking at the pictures on the phone that she had taken. I'm going, did you take these of the like selfies? And she's like, no. She's like, I didn't even know you took those. So I had obviously taken them and have forgotten. And she didn't even know she had taken them. But she, she was taking pictures also because she knows that she takes pictures when I get intubated. She takes pictures for you know, my documentation and all that kind of stuff. And she knows we document my life. It's part of being YouTube vlogger and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. I had Andy go and grab my phone and then I think he took a a picture so that he could send it to his grandparents because they were really worried because they were late. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, and all this time, you were on the phone with 911. Yeah, 911. Yeah, and, and so they were like, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like trying to handle you, and I'm handling the phone operator. I'm like, this is too much! And so so what else was going on? Uh, so then, while I was on the phone with the uh, 911 operator, you kind of like sat up, and you were like looking through it, and then you like stopped moving, and you like started to tilt to the to the right. And so I had to catch you. So you wouldn't hit your head again. Um, and then I was like, oh, well, she's unconscious. And the ladies were like, well, you need to tell me if she starts seizing, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, okay. And I'm like, oh, she's having a seizure. And then the ladies like, do not put anything in her mouth. Do not move the patient. I know, they always like, tell blah, stuff blah, blah. that we already know. Yeah. I'm like. <laughs> it's like everything that you already know. They act like it's like a, a um, new thing. And then. <sighs> then she was asking me, oh, what's the address? What's this? Is she breathing? And I'm like, she's. 
She's on. I can't check her breathing if she's having a seizure. It's kind of hard because you don't breathe. It's yeah. so stupid. But yeah. Um. So this is kind of what happened. I'm guessing is my head hit the counter wherever. If it was on this edge, the corner, whatever it was. And as you can see right here, there's a goose egg and bruise and um staples. I, I mean stitches. No, those are I stitches. Meant stitches. How many are they? Um. I don't know. Can you count them? Uh, Is it three or four? I can't remember. I think it's three. It looks like three. Okay, so three. So they stitches. left one area for drainage, but um, possibly I don't know. Um, but yeah. So I hit my head or whatever. But in the pictures, as you can see, I'm laying. Excuse me, cold. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm laying like wait, like this or something, right? Uh, in the yeah, picture. I, I think mean, I'm it's... laying like this in the picture, right? So my wound is up here. Not here, it's here, okay? So I must have hit, and then as I went down having the seizure, I, I do normally turn to my right side during um, tonic-clonic seizures. Mm -hmm. um, so it could have been that, that I was turning to my right side. I don't know exactly how it happened. I was unconscious, okay? So, gosh, but nobody else is more of an expert than I am in my own head injury. But So I'm laying here, the blood obviously trickles from here to here here to here right yeah so you can see in the pictures that there is trickling going like this uh, i mean it even goes over your eyebrows like yeah so so obviously if i'm seizing i'm moving or whatever so it could have moved a little bit whatever my eyebrows whatever there's also a puddle where it's just dripping so i could have been like this whatever it was dripping i don't know so it's going in one direction. Normally, you know blood follows the same direction. So it already started, it keeps following. But if I was moving, it kind of moved. So then, guess what? I'm kind of gaining consciousness. I sit up, I'm like, what's going on? I don't know what's going on. I sit against the fridge, whatever, okay? Blood could be dripping like this. That's what blood does, right? So it's dripping down, going to my chin, whatever, through my hair. Also, another thing is my wound was in my hairline. So that means that my hair being pulled back in a bun like it is, was clotting it naturally like a band-aid or whatever. So there wasn't that much blood. I mean, obviously I only had three stitches, so it wasn't like this huge gaping, giant traumatic brain injury or anything. Thank God. Uh, I know, I'm so glad. And it could have been much worse, guys. But I'm serious, like this was a head wound that was being covered by the hair, kind of making it clot. Then I possibly lost consciousness again. We were talking on the phone. She said I wasn't there. Then when she came in the house, I wasn't there either. So I'm up and down, up and down, up and down. So the blood's going like this, like this, like this, okay? God, it's simple fucking physics, guys. Like, I'm getting so mad. But it's physics, okay? Is it physics? <laughs> Am I just saying that wrong? Okay, so what's uh, Newton's law of motion? I don't know. You don't know? Okay, so Newton's law of motion is whatever's in motion stays in motion until acted on by another force. So gravity. Yeah. So exactly. So your I'm blood. On my side, gravity's going this way. And then I'm it gets stopped up. by gravity's the. Going this way. It gets stopped by the the either the crease of your forehead or on your cheek because you had like a big old like. Oh, that's another thing. So I'm laying like this. Okay. I I mean I. In the pictures, I'm laying like that, okay? The blood's going down like this. It's filling up under my face, okay? <laughs> Big puddle, but my face is on the ground. On the ground, okay? The puddle is then transferred onto my face. So when you look at the pictures, you see this trail going like this, couple trails here, going eyebrows, going up here, whatever. And then you see this huge puddle of blood on the side of my face, right? You see the big smear of my face on the ground, okay? <laughs> that is because the blood was draining down for however long it was that I was kind of out of it during the seizure. Then there's other smears. You can look at the ground in the picture. There's smears from, you know, me seizing. I don't know if, if I touched my head. I don't know if my touch touched the head, the f my t head touched the floor and smeared it. I don't know. So it's blood smear. There's droplets, okay? So it obviously dropped at some point. Then it also went down and filled up under my face. 
Then I came to a little bit, drained down my face, passed out, whatever. Had another seizure. JC was there to witness that. The blood moves around, okay? So I don't understand why that's so hard to understand, but there you go. Oh, may I uh, add one thing is that some people made this whole, oh, nice fake blood comments or okay. whatever. Yeah. And the thing is, is I have a brother who works at Hellscream Haunted House. You yep. can look which it up. Which is right down the street. Yep, which is look exactly it up. Hell right. Scream. Hellscream Haunted House, number one rated uh, haunted house in the Colorado area. Um, and he comes home with fake blood on his face all the time. Yep. And it, I've seen it. I've gone. Yep. I mean, I'm pretty sure everybody in the world has dealt with some fake blood at least. And it's not fake, Halloween. fake blood. No, this is like the $20, 20 mill, uh, milliliter bottles. This is like the top of the line theater shelf stuff. And when it dries, it doesn't crack and dry. It dries and it, yeah, it, sometimes it'll dry darker red. But it'll never crack. It'll always dry smooth. And you, I mean, you can go buy yourself a bottle and check it out right now and, and, and look at it. But it does it does dry smooth. But normally most of the fake blood is kind of... Um, Cheap. It's kind of like an oily, greasy whatever. And it mm -hmm. doesn't ever really dry anyway. Yeah, no. Some but, of it's oil, but the gel does dry. But seriously, guys, if you don't know what blood looks like, <laughs> real blood, when it dries and gets all cracky... Seriously, it's really ridiculous that you would even think that that was fake blood. But hello, the doctor doesn't just put stitches in someone's head because they had fake blood on themselves. Okay, there was an actual wound that was bleeding. Blood was rude. <laughs> My dog's being rude. Oh, so the <laughs> he's so um, cute. The blood, the blood. Some of it was a little wet, some of it was a little dry because it was still bleeding, but it wasn't bleeding like profusely because it had kind of clotted because of my hair. When you look at the pictures of the actual wound, somebody had said that the picture was from the last head injury. I don't remember when it was, but it was, you know, like a few months ago, whatever. They said that it was the same exact one. Okay. They do look sim similar because obviously the last time I hit myself on the counter, which it was over there because the blood was on the counter over there last time. This time there wasn't actually blood on the counter, so we don't know exactly where I hit it. But I was right here, so we figured it was over here. But last time, if you look at the fucking picture, sorry, excuse my language, <laughs> the, the cut isn't even as wide as this time on my head. And it's also like... I think that one's farther. Yeah, that one's farther from my hairline. It's farther back in my hair than this one was. I had my head shaved for brain surgery. Guess what? There was all these other scars on my head when they had shaved it. And I have pictures of that as well. Because guess what? I've had so many head wounds. I can't keep track of them all. But they look clearly different. And one is like, you know, an inch and a half, two inches away from the hairline. And then the other one's like half an inch from the hairline. So they're clearly different. And so, I mean, if I could fake having a head wound, I mean, if I just like hit myself on the counter on purpose, whatever, you know what? I think I'm a really good fucking actress because I made myself bruise. I have stitches. I went to the hospital. I have doctor's paperwork that I'm going to show you here in a minute. And that was all faked. Are you serious? No. So seriously, you guys need to stop because this is my life. I tried to share my life. And of course, you guys could get confused, that's fine. But when you don't know something, ask a question. Don't assume and don't try and like act like you know something because you really don't. Don't assume because it makes an ass out of you <laughs> and me. Or you and you. You and you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay, so now I'm gonna plug it in. So you see how long the cord is? I walk around my house and talk on the phone. Okay. Is it unplugged? Is it broken? No. Not broken. Not unplugged. Not broken. Okay.
white because it's seeing the ceiling and the light. Look at that. Black. And that's the camera that's facing this way. Selfie. Not selfie. Oh my god. <laughs> selfie. Not selfie.